The hills around the village of Fran Ali in the region of Tetuan contain a treasure, one of the richest clay soils in all Morocco. This clay is beaten and sieved before being mixed with water to produce the raw material with which the pots are made. The pottery of Frenali is renowned for its shock-resistant and heat-resistant qualities. This has as much to do with the clay's quality as it does with the quantity of clay used to make pots with thick and uniform walls. After being dried in the sun, the pots are coated. The coating or slip is burnished with a small stone. This considerably reinforces the structure of the pottery. The pots are then left to dry again in the sun before being fired. The pots and the wood are placed together in a traditional bread oven. The wood used is that of the tuya, a tree whose extremely hard wood produces very high temperatures when burned. Firing lasts all night, and the next day the pieces are removed one by one and checked before being taken to the souk to be sold. The pottery of Frenali is mainly used for cooking and is famous for this throughout Morocco. Further east in the region of Al Hosema, near the village of Ida du Shen, the clay is not sufficiently oily. Because of this, the pottery here is made with a mix of small fired pots, which are broken and crushed, and a type of soil known as ashkouf. The pots in this area are smaller and are designed to hold liquids. Hence their extreme fineness and the delicateness with which they are made. Once the finished pots are dry, they undergo an initial firing in the kiln to harden them. The potters then painstakingly paint signs on the pieces. Although the signs are never identical, they are always on the same traditional themes, whose meaning has been lost in the mists of time. The pots are fired for a second time at a low temperature. This changes the colour of the paint.
The region of Beni Zeroual in the south of the reef is famous for its large pots. And the best potters are to be found in the village of Ain Bushrik. The way in which the clay is worked and modelled into pots is different here. The clay is shaped into round slabs. These slabs are placed on top of each other and the joins are reinforced. The body is then smoothed with a stone. After each step, the pots are left to harden in the sun. Once the finished pots are dry, they can be dyed different colours before being painted. The villagers use pigments made from minerals. The decorative motifs date back to very ancient times and make these pots resemble genuine antiques. Because of their size, these pots cannot be fired in a traditional kiln. Instead, they're stacked on top of each other and covered with a mixture of cow dung and straw, which serves as the kiln's wall and as fuel. Firing takes place at night because it's easier to see whether the walls are airtight. By morning, the pots look as if they're lying in a field of lava or among the ruins of Pompeii. They're carefully separated before being stored until they are sold. <laughs>